Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video, the official Q&A video series for NoDQ.com, right here on NoDQ.com, as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and a videos affiliate, a great affiliate at that, ringsidenews.com. Got your questions here from spring.me slash Aaron Rift regarding Raw and other topics. Let's get started with the first one from Spectre World. Do you think Vince coming out to promote the free network was enough to boost sales. I'm going to have to quote Dean Ambrose on this one. Nope. I think that Vince was more effective coming out and promoting the Survivor Series main event. I think that that added some credibility to Survivor Series with Vince being the one to come out and make the announcement and doing this angle where the authority has to win or they are done. I think that that was effective. I think Vince coming out and promoting the network means nothing. I think that it was a sign of desperation for Vince to come out on SmackDown and do that little promo and WWE manipulating the crowd to have them do the Daniel Bryan yes chant and then insert that into Vince's promo. I think that that was a sign of desperation. But usually when Vince comes back, you know business is about to pick up. That's how it's been historically. When the ratings are down or there's some kind of bad news, Vince comes back and you know you're in for a big angle. And that's what we got on Raw with the build for Survivor Series. So I thought that that was well done at least. And I got another one here from Spectre World. With Vince coming out and saying the authority could be out of power, does that mean that one or both are going back to being behind the scenes and villain GMs are coming back? I really hope that this is the end of the authority. I think that the storyline has gone on for way too long. It's played out. I really feel that it should have been done after WrestleMania when Daniel Bryan beat Triple H. That's just my personal opinion. I think that the heel authority figure in general has been done to death in WWE. And for that matter, I would rather see no GMs at all for a time period. Even babyface GMs. I think that I would like to just see a period where you don't have any authority figures on television unless... There is a situation that calls for it where you need somebody with, with authority to come out and make a decision. But beyond that, I would just like to see no authority figures as regular characters on Raw and SmackDown, at least for a time period. Just not have one for a while. And I got this one from Day 4 5 1985. Could you see this babyface turn for Randy Orton leading to a swerve at Survivor Series where he screws Team Cena? I suppose that anything is possible. Vince Russo's not booking for WWE, so I think that it could be unlikely. But then again, Randy Orton has been very public about not being a fan of being a babyface. He would prefer to be a heel. I always figured that if Orton was going to be babyface again, he would go up against Brock Lesnar for the WWE title. I don't know if that's a future direction that WWE is going to go in. Um, but... You always could do that swerve. I think that it would be a bad idea to do a swerve at this point. They did a tremendous job on Raw with that angle between Randy Orton and Seth Rollins with the curb stomp and Randy Orton busted open. Him swerving everybody and going back heel, to me, would not make logical sense. And plus, it would keep the authority around. And as I just mentioned a few moments ago, I want the storyline to end. And as I mentioned in a previous video as well, I, I think that Team Cena is winning this because John Cena is going on to Royal Rumble to face Brock Lesnar, and WWE wants him to look as strong as possible. Uh, so I don't see Cena's team losing for that reason alone. So I think the odds are against it happening, but certainly you cannot rule it out. All right, this one comes from Alexander WWE. Hey Aaron, is there a chance of Randy Orton going over Seth Rollins in their feud? Please answer in video. Well, once again, if Randy Orton is being built up to eventually face Brock Lesnar, maybe at the fast lane or whatever the hell they're calling the February pay-per-view, I still think WWE should do that match, Orton versus Lesnar, before Lesnar drops the title. If that match is in the, in the works in WWE, I would have Randy Orton beat Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins has been looking very strong. He beat Dean Ambrose at Hell in a Cell. He's still got the money in the bank. He has still been positioned as a top star in WWE. So I don't think it would really do him a lot of harm to lose to Randy Orton, especially 
if Warren's going on to face Brock Lesnar. If Warren's not going to face Brock Lesnar, maybe you could have Seth Rollins get a win over Randy Orton. I guess it doesn't really matter because I'm sure they're going to have three or four matches and they'll trade wins, and in the end it won't really matter all that much who comes out victorious in the feud. Uh, but I would like to see Orton go over if he's going to be facing Brock Lesnar. All right, this one comes from Ice Blade ARI. Hey, Aaron, great show. Do you think the WWE missed out on a potential pay-per-view push with Rusev? I believe the U.S. Championship match should have been built better for Survivor Series. Please give your opinion on video. I really don't think it matters all that much. I think that WWE's mentality is they want to boost network subscribers now, and that's why they decided to give Sheamus versus Rusev now and put it on the WWE Network because they want to build up the network. That is their priority right now. That That is what they're trying to do, get those network subscriptions up. And I guess they felt that having the match take place after Raw on the network means more than putting the match at Survivor Series. And I don't necessarily disagree with them. I think that it was a good move to have the match take place on the network after Raw. And fans will know now that if there is a match on the network, it might be important because you might tune in and you might just see a title change. So I do think it's a smart move by WWE to make the network matches important and make it important to subscribe to the network because you might just see something that you won't get to see on television if you subscribe to the network for just $9.99 or get it for free for your first month. All right, this one comes from... T for Nora. Hey, Aaron, do you think it is possible that Rusev and Lana will change the U.S. title into the Russian title? It would be a very awesome way to get them heat. I think I talked about this a few weeks ago. Um, you know, Lance Storm already did that angle where he won the U.S. title and turned it into the Canadian title. Now, that was, what, 14 years ago in WCW when... They were going downhill and on the verge of going out of business. Uh, so I don't know how many people watching WWE today actually remember that. So I would be perfectly fine with them recycling that angle. And uh, I, I would very much enjoy that. I think that it would be a good way for him to get heat and uh, turn it into the Russian title. I feel that every 13, 14 years, you know, it's okay to recycle an angle from the past. And it's not like they've already recycled enough stuff with Rusev from previous foreigner gimmicks. So, you know, whatever. It, it, it's fine. It wouldn't be a big deal to me if they did that. And uh, I, I think it would make for entertaining television. So I'm all for it. This one comes from Masters31. Hey, Aaron, with Rusev on a tear right now and a few baby faces out of action, don't you think a Rusev versus Kurt Angle would be a great attraction? And do you think it's possible? Well, anything's possible. But right now it's looking like Kurt Angle is staying with TNA. And I think that if Kurt Angle was going back to WWE, WWE would put him in there with the top tier talent. They would put him in there with guys like Dean Ambrose or Daniel Bryan or Brock Lesnar, not Rusev. I think that that would be a waste of a Kurt Angle match, even though you do have that storyline, USA versus Russia. So, I mean, I guess you could do Rusev versus Kurt Angle and have that be a stepping stone for Kurt Angle to go on to WrestleMania. You know, if Kurt Angle was going back to WWE and in a perfect situation, have Angle come in, win a big match, and go on to WrestleMania. So you could do that, but right now it's looking like Angle is staying with TNA, so not really much of a point in discussing this. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it would be a good idea to do that match and play off the USA versus Russia and have Kurt Angle be the one to end Rusev's streak if Kurt Angle is coming in. All right, got a couple more questions here. This one from The Dark One One. Hey, Aaron, what is the best I Quit match you've ever watched in WWF? I would say Royal Rumble 99, Rock vs. Mankind. That match just had everything, big bumps, weapons, fighting that looked real. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it was very real. Mick Foley getting all those unprotected chair shots to the head. <laughs> yes, that was, um, that definitely looked very real. Uh, I really enjoyed that match. I mean, I was there in person number one. And, uh, you know, I liked the spot where uh, Mankind was brawling with The Rock in the stands and he got thrown off and landed on that electrical circuit board and he had all the sparks flying. And, 
you know, from my viewpoint, it looked like he was killed. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, that was a really entertaining match. One of the all-time best I Quit matches and most memorable I Quit matches. Um, if I had, a, I had to pick a runner-up, I would say um, Triple H versus Randy Orton from No Mercy 2007. That was a really good I Quit match. Um, but yeah, I think my number one pick would be uh, Mankind and the Rock, just because everyone remembers that match with the chair shots and, and Mankind's bump, and just the two of them were on fire with their feud during that period as well. All right, last question today from Calvin Bowman 1. Hey, Aaron, do you see Theodore Long returning back to WWE anytime soon and maybe becoming the new Raw general manager? Please answer in video. Uh, going back to earlier, I don't want to see another GM, especially a heel GM, but same thing with a babyface GM. I think that, um, you know, that is going back to the past with Teddy Long, bringing him back and just, uh, you know, I want to see something different. I don't want to see them going back to the same old thing. If WWE was going to have a new babyface GM, I'd like to see somebody new in the role, not bringing back somebody from the past. So as much as I love tag team matches, I'm going to have to say no to bringing back Teddy Long. That'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks as always for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click the subscribe button. Got more talk wrestling coming up this Thursday with Jeff Meacham and Rob Van Dam. Check that out and stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest in WWE and TNA. See you next time.